I know most of you are actually way better than me in terms of being able to recall and remember most of these formulas. But I just want to talk about the proof. Yeah, because you know some of you are able to remember. For example, the derivative of tan of x, you know some of you, you know it's x squared x. And then you also know that uh, the derivative of cot of x, you know that it's equal to negative cos sec squared x. You know that derivative of sec of x is also equal to sec x not pi by tan of x. And then you also know the derivative of cosec of x, which even right now I can't remember. But of course it's equal to negative cosec of x multiplied by cot of x. I can't remember all this. I've got issues. I can the only one I can remember properly is this part. So we are going to look at their proofs from the basic uh, things that we should know. So let us just know that sine of x, the derivative of sine of x is equal to cosine of x. So the way I usually remember this, I trick my brain by remembering this to say, okay, sine is a bit normal. <laughs> that it is positive, it produces a positive result. Then of course, the opposite is true. The derivative of cosine of x becomes what? It now becomes negative sine of x. Okay. So this is where everything starts from and everything builds up from. So in a case where they give me negative sine of x, I know that sine maintains the sine, so it will be negative cosine of x. I know if I say negative cosine of x, I know that cosine does not maintain the sine, so it will become positive sine of x. But all the same, we'll apply and only use the ones I've written on top there. Okay, let's begin with um, the derivative of tan, tan of x. So the derivative of tan of x. Now we know that tan of x, so by the way, for you to be watching this video, I believe you've got basic introduction to trigonometry. So you know how to deal with trigonometric identities here. So tan of x is the same as sine x over cosine of x. So if you've not done the identities, watch a video. The link is in the description about the identities. Very important as a basic foundation. Okay. So if you've got a division of functions, we've looked at what we call the quotient true, which I believe you've already done. Okay. So the quotient true tells us, the, easy, the easiest way of, of remembering the quotient true is by beginning with the denominator. Whatever you have on the denominator should start first. So therefore, if this is our y, our y is equal to tan of x, we expect that our y prime is going to be begin with whatever you have on the denominator. So I have cosine of x. Now multiply by the derivative of the numerator. So the derivative of sine of x, we know it's cosine of x. Now minus, that's a question true. So don't forget that we started with a denominator. So we're going to now start with a numerator, sine of x, and then multiply by the derivative of now the denominator. So we like to do the opposite. So the derivative of the denominator in this case our denominator is cosine of x, so the derivative is going to be negative sine of x. Divided by, the quotient root tells us the square of the denominator, so called squared of x. So, on the next step, y prime becomes, so cosine of x multiplied by cosine of x, that is cosine squared of x, cosine squared of x, minus Negative times negative here will get a positive. So, so positive sine squared of x and then over cosine squared of x. So some of you already know where this is going, right? So since we've got a denominator of cosine squared x, this is also cosine of squared x, we can convert the sine squared x to cosine squared x. So sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is equal to a 1. I'm not teaching identities, that's an identity. So if, I, if I'm to make sine squared the subject, this can go the other side. So sine squared of x becomes 1 minus cosine squared of x. So we can substitute that. So while we have sine squared x, 
I'll remove it and put 1 minus eh, cosine squared of x cosine squared of x okay so our y prime becomes what so if you distribute the positive so you end up subtracting cosine squared of x minus the negative cosine squared of x coming from the brackets with a positive one over cosine squared of x which is a denominator now this part will subtract so you remain with 1 over cosine squared of x 1 over cosine squared of x so at that point some of you are already conversant with identities you know where the answer what the answer is so y prime is equal to 1 over cosine squared of x so I said identities are a, pre, a prerequisite to this video so 1 over cosine of x is equal to what so that is equal to sec of x so if the denominator is squared then that will be squared so therefore our y prime is equal to sec squared of x which is the thing that you people are able to remember okay so the derivative of tan of x is equal to sec squared of x so it's not just like people guess all these are gotten so we've gotten the first part i believe you're now able to remember that so i'll just be taking note of the identities we've come up so the derivative of tan of x we've already found it's equal to sec squared of x let's look at the other parts now let's consider cotangent the derivative of contangent so this is a case where our y is equal to cotangent of x now i believe you know your identities so contangent is the same as what 1 over tan of x now 1 over tan of x is the same as cosine of x over sine of x of course i've skipped one part you will know how to perform all these simple mathematical expressions where if you have 1 over sine of x over cosine of x it can go back to that okay 1 over a fraction is like the reciprocal so you just exchange the denominator of the numerator so that's what we have now we can apply again the quotient rule the same quotient rule that we've looked at so apply it in this case take your u to be your cosine and then the v there so apply the same thing that we applied to tan you'll be able to get the answer now pause the video and just try that out okay so the basic idea is again start with a denominator so our y prime becomes our denominator is what so we are applying the quotient rule by the way so our denominator is sine of x now multiply by the derivative of the numerator the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x now minus so we started with a denominator so we're going on to now subtract the numerator the numerator is cosine of x now since we are started we've started with a numerator we can now multiply by the derivative of the denominator now the derivative of the denominator which is sine of x the derivative is what cosine of x divided by we're supposed to divide by what the denominator squared okay it's already coming out so we have negative sine squared of x minus now this part is going to give us minus what cosine squared of x now cosine squared of x directly we know it's the same as 1 minus eh? sine squared of x over sine squared of x so where is this taking us so negative sine squared of x minus 1 minus so if we distribute the negative we're going to have negative sine squared of x plus sine squared of x and then minus a 1 over sine squared of x so i collected the like terms in the derivative i know after distributing this negative this becomes negative and becomes positive so this will go away and then what remains 
So at this point what is remaining is negative 1 over sine squared of x which we now know I believe we know what 1 over sine of x is right so 1 over sine of x from your basic identities 1 over sine of x is the same as cosec of x okay so since it is squared we maintain the negative that is there so it's negative now since it's squared it's going to be negative cosec squared of x okay so and that is true so the derivative can okay, now write that one down as well the derivative of cot contangent of x is basically equal to negative cosecant squared of x trust me I can't remember these I can't memorize them but at least I know what I can do just if I've got enough time in an exam I'm able to just compute the answer and then we can look at the other one let's say a case where we have y is equal to second of x now second of x you know that this is the same as 1 over what? cosine of x okay that's an identity so this is more straightforward and direct so again we'll apply the question true now the question true tells us to start with the denominator so we'll start with cosine of x multiplied by the derivative of the numerator now the derivative of the constant 1 is a 0 minus we'll now start with a numerator which is a 1 multiplied by the derivative of the denominator now the denominator is cosine of x the derivative of cosine of x is what? negative sine of x now quotient root tells us you divide by the square of the denominator which is cos squared of x this part is a 0 and then you have now positive sine of x over cosine squared of x so cosine of squared of x is the same as cosine of x multiplied by cosine of x you know where that is taking us now so y prime becomes what sine of x over cosine of x is what so I can take this to be a fraction so that we have it sine of x over cosine of x is tan of x and then 1 over cosine of x is what 1 over cosine of x is sec of x this is the part now where it gives us that as a result so the other one that we've obtained is eh, the derivative of sec of x is equal to sec of x itself multiplied by tan of x okay now feel free to pause the video and try out the other one <coughs> so let's say our y what, what is remaining we've dealt with cot we've dealt with sec now we're remaining with cosecant now y is equal to cosecant of x now we know that cosecant is the same as 1 over sine of x so you can apply the same principle there so what do we expect so y prime so I've said already to say the quotient root tells us that start with a denominator sine of x and then multiply by the derivative of a 1 which is a 0 as well and then subtract the numerator now multiply by the derivative of a denominator so the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x and then of um, sine squared x so in the next step I'll continue that this part is a 0 so we have negative cosine of x over sine squared of x so sine squared I can split it again I can split it so sine of x multiplied by sine of x and then I introduce a 1 there so cosine divided by sine is what? cosine divided by sine is what? so that is contangent now there's a negative don't forget and then 1 over sine of x is what cosecant of x so this is these are some of the things that help some of you to be able to memorize the formulas so 
the derivative of cosecant of x becomes cosecant of x itself now there's a negative don't forget so negative cosecant of x um, and then contangent of x I can't easily remember that okay so at this point including the basic ones that you know derivative of sine of x is equal to cosine of x the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x okay so you now know how to derive the derivatives of the basic trigonometric functions tan of x contangent of x cosecant of x secant of x sine of x cosine of x and these are very useful as you've seen from the most of uh, the questions that we've looked at.